China rose is very similar to EU rose. So this is the same six substances as the original rose six, right? The same homogeneous thresholds and the exemptions largely align as well. So the exemptions map, they're not the same exemption numbers, but they're the same exemptions. So if you have your EU rose compliance, then you know if you comply with China rose or not. There are some different administrative requirements though. Um, depending on whether or not you have any of those substances present over the threshold, you have to apply a marking on the product, the ones you see on the screen here. If you don't have any substances over the threshold, in other words, you're not claiming any exemptions, then you can use the Circle E logo, the green one, which means that this is an environmentally friendly product. If you do have one of those substances over the threshold, then you have to mark the, what they call the EPUP, the Environmental Protection Use Period marking, and that's a circle with two arrows. And the number in the circle references the amount of years the product can be used before it starts to become environmentally unstable or, or before it leaches the substance into the environment. And that number is usually chosen based on lifespan more than on, on that because the reality is that lead and glass and a resistor is never gonna leach out. So you could put a really huge number in there, but people tend like if the product has a 10 year lifespan, they might put a 20. So it just kind of depends. You're up, you can choose that number yourself. There's no real requirement on how to choose that number. And then the other thing you have to do is you have to provide a hazardous substance table with the product. And this product shows the individual subparts of that product and then shows you where the hazardous substances are. And the intention of this information is for the recyclers at end of life to know exactly how to take this apart and treat it. They want to know where the lead is, where the mercury is, so they handle it correctly. Okay, so this is another requirement. So as we've seen, we haven't seen any restrictions, just marking and table, okay? All electrical and electronic equipment is in scope and the product marking and the hazardous table are all that's required. There's no substance restrictions unless, and this is the key, unless the product is listed in the China Rose Compliance Management Catalog. If it is managed in the management catalog, then you have to meet the restriction limits and you also have to validate that using the compliant assessments process, right? But the first batch of equipment was added to this catalog list in March of 2018 and conformity assessment is mandatory for listed products starting in November of 2019. Right now, the 12 substances that are subject to the certification process are refrigerators, air conditioners, washing machines, water heaters, printers, copiers, fax machines, televisions, monitors, microcomputers, handheld phones for mobile communication and telephone sets. So uh, you can see servers, laptop computers, those kind of things are not here. So mostly consumer electronics and appliances, all right? Um, the conformity assessment process is only for the products in the catalog, only for these 12 products have to meet this requirement. And there's two different paths you can take. You can do a voluntary certification, which includes doing testing, factory inspections and ongoing validation activities or self-declaration, which is where everybody's expected to go with this, uh, which means you simply uh, meet the due diligence requirements associated with IEC 63000, which is the international due diligence requirement for ROWS. So you can either do a voluntary certification process or you can do a self-declaration process. And both require you to submit some data to a database. And um, once you do one of those two things, then you affix a logo to the product, either the voluntary certification logo or the self-declaration logo, okay? So to summarize, it's the same substances, exemptions, and homogeneous thresholds as EU Rojas. So there's a lot of leveraging going on here. Applicable to EEE only, not like REACH, it's applicable to everything. All products in scope require the EPUB logo and the substance table, but only products in the management catalog must be evaluated for the conformity assessment process. That process um, allows two different routes, either voluntary certification or self-declaration. Both require you to submit data to a database and um, you have to apply logos to the product once you've done that certification process. Learn more by viewing the full-length video online at greensofttech.com videos. Plus, learn about our environmental regulation solutions online at greensofttech.com.